Buenos días. Good morning. First of all, I would like to thank the Pan American Health Organization for inviting me to take part of such an important event. And uh, well, I would like to share a look from the Ministry of Finance and to share with you information on how do we coordinate and articulate this results related strategies as presented by Lucia. We are going to take a look at the progress in the implementation of budgetary programs aimed at improving maternal and child health. And we wanted to start by showing you some of these slides that you might have seen before. Why should we improve the quality of public spending and what was the situation in the years 2000 and 2007? As you can see from the slides, is that both the prevalence of chronic malnutrition in children under five and the percentage of students with sufficient performance for reading comprehension have not made significant progress within that period of time. However, there has been a growth of the average spending of around 5% per year in that same period analyzed. And the reflection that we made at the Ministry of Finance is what is happening if we are increasing budgets, if we are earmarking budgets, but we are not seeing results related to those interventions that are being targeted. So there was a need on the side of the state to improve both the allocation of resources linked to the results that the sector that leads this initiative has as a challenge. So we wanted to replace that historical allocation that was carried out from the different budgetary items to one that was much more effective and that focused on the satisfaction of the citizen. That is why we decided to create these budgetary programs. They are also known as PPRs. The purpose is to provide concrete and specific results to the population through effective interventions. And the main, the main purpose is the satisfaction of the population of the citizen. So the results-based budget we want to effectively, timely, and efficiently provide public goods and services required by the population. That is the main purpose of this approach of the results-based budget. And this process is articulated with the classical cycle of the budgetary cycle. We start with the programming, formulation, execution of the budget up to control and evaluation of the budget. So in this budgetary cycle, we include this methodology of results-based budget. It is not disconnected from this priority cycle. Every public entity carries this out every year, and this is when we assign the necessary budget for the interventions that were defined as priority interventions. If this were to be disconnected from this cycle, this would be a plan that becomes isolated, and we cannot operationalize all this interesting and priority action. So we want to apply principles and techniques for the design, execution, follow-up, and evaluation of the budget with an articulation that uh, with a good articulation between goods and services. They are also known as outputs or products. These are the interventions developed by the sector. And the and within the definition of this product, these are the relation or list of products and services delivered to the citizens, but they have an important quality. They want to generate a change in the population. It is not sufficient to deliver the medication if we're not going to see a specific result on the population of the citizen. It is not sufficient to deliver interventions if those interventions are not going to generate a change in the population. So all these different decisions as part of this budgetary cycle are made and they are linked to a budgetary allocation, as I said, and they are based on information that are duly supported or that are evidence-based, and they show that they have worked in the past. And if we take a look back about the evolution of the implementation of this results-based budget in the budget Act of 2007, we established a critical path for its implementation in a progressive manner in the 
uh, Budget Act of 2008, we create five budgetary programs. One of them is the Articulated Nutritional Program. The other one is the Neonatal Maternal Health Program that are linked to uh, the uh, Ministry of Health sector. And in the Ministry of Education, we have the uh, Learning Achievements. Between 2009 and 2011, we progressively create up to 25 budgetary programs encompassing 15 sectors from 29 from the 29 sectors. As part of this, we have the others that were implemented by the health care sectors, such as non-communicable diseases, metaxenic diseases, zoonosis, TB. We also created the uh, Cancer Prevention and Control Program. And between 2012 and 2013, they consolidated the process and they made changes in the design of other programs, and they created other programs. There are some new programs, such as uh, uh, the SAMU program, which has to do with emergencies and uh, urgent cases, the, also the disaster management and control program. The Ministry of Health has uh, between eight to nine budgetary programs. Just to let you know that a new program that was designed by the sector that is going to become formalized in 2015 has to do with mental health. And the budget for 2014 in the public uh, budget for 2014, we have 73 budgetary programs that entail 22 sectors. So we see that since 2007 until now, there has been a growth in the definition of budgetary programs and also in the budgetary allocation for each of these programs, as we will see in the next slide. The budget of the public sector that has been scheduled to without considering the payment for uh, debt service pensions or contingency reserve uh, since 2008 until 2014 has experienced a growth of around 51%. Uh, this is expressed in millions uh, in millions of new soles, of nuevos soles. We have seen that there has been a growth, an increase of the budget earmarked within the category of budgetary programs from 2008 from 2008 until present. Just to remind you what was uh, shown graphically by Lucia on one of her slides is that the rationale of the budgetary program starts by identifying a program, the specific program that problem that we want to address. We generate the budgetary program, and within this budgetary program, we have defined a specific result that we want to achieve and that is why we have designed different programs where we include effective and efficient interventions. And then this is, uh, then we move to the programming uh, part to define goods and services so we can deliver the service to the citizen. And as part of this process, we create operational definitions which are um, which is a matter of standardizing this delivery of the service in a more organized and standardized way and to define which levels of government will be targeted in the delivery of the service and also to clearly establish the role of these operators within this service delivery process and we also have tools so the resources are adequately earmarked, and this has to do with the operational implementation. In, this is used by the, and the health sector uses the CEDA as a tool for this. And in an organized way, we do the follow-up and evaluation. We want to make sure that these interventions are implemented through the delivery of inputs or supplies. They also use the ENDES surveys to progressively uh, measure the concrete results for those interventions that were defined by the specific sector. This is just an overview of the different interventions linked to the result, which is to decrease the prevalence of chronic malnutrition. This is a slide that you know very well. And the logic behind the budgetary programs, just to show you a better idea of this. Uh, as I mentioned, we have to start with a problem, but I wanted to focus on the supplies. Under supplies, we have the, those different supplies that the sector has defined jointly with the operators, validating this uh, across different processes. They have identified what is truly needed to provide and deliver the service to the citizen to operationalize this other sector. Uh, 
and so they won't experience a lack of uh, supply, such as lack of vaccines, lack of personnel, lack of cold chain, because we do not want to affect the population. So this is a way of uh, closing the loop of results so we can timely provide this good or service to the citizen. Now let us look at the allocation of the budget uh, directly to products or output conducted between 2009 to 2014. In the definition of the budgetary program, they identify products, and within those products, not all of them have the same weight due to a number of characteristics. We want to see if they are more effective than others. And as part of the articulated nutritional program, the sector identifies products that are more prioritized than others without taking away the importance of others, such as uh, children with complete, uh, uh, with all the vaccines, children with iron supplementation, and others. Then we have the group of other products within the same budgetary program. Let us look at the product or output of children with all their vaccines. This is also part of the integrated financial administration system. And if you read the number of the product, you can have a better reference and you know what this allocated budget refers to. In this case, we're talking about children with full vaccines or with all their vaccines for their age. This is, we have had, we have seen the need of organizing this to better, so the citizens can better understand how it works. So the budget linked to this particular product since 2009 until 2014, as you can see, this has had a sustainable increase of the budget in millions of solace of 165.7 million in 2009. And now it has 419.6 million in 2013. And now we have 343.6 million in 2014. You might say that there has been a decrease of the budget for this product. There hasn't been a decrease in the budget. What we have seen is an adjustment because the prices of vaccines that used to have um, X price has changed over time because sometimes uh, they buy the vaccines through the revolving funds or through economies of scale, and this has decreased the value. So this ensures the actual value for this intervention. This doesn't mean that there has been a decrease in the budget, but there has been an adjustment according to the actual cost. And this shows the actual cost of the supply. In the case of children with complete CRED, there has been a sustainable increase of the budget, 20 million in 2009. Now. It has 191 million in 2014. The same applies to the neonatal maternal program. We can see that there has been a sustained uh, increase of the budget of the different key products identified by the sector. And this information is available through the economic transparency portal of the Ministry of Finance of Peru. Just to, I would like to take a minute to point out the following. This project that has increased uh, with uh, different products, both the articulated nutritional program and the maternal program, when we see the breakdown, we can see that this budget has been reoriented more significantly for medical supplies and for the administrative hiring or contracting of services uh, personnel. So from 2009 to 2013, we can see that in both cases, both the maternal program and the nutritional program, there has been an increase in medical supplies. We are talking about this is something that we use to group uh, supplies, equipment, vaccines. And also we see the administrative hiring of services, which has to do with personal. This has allowed us to hire a higher number of obstetricians, biologists, nurses, physicians, and all the staff related to the provision of these services. This is the evolution of professional days in healthcare facilities at the first level of care. There has been a favorable evolution from 2011 to 2013. This is another slide shown by Russia, which shows us that from 2007, there is a marked decrease in the prevalence of chronic malnutrition. And in the case of follow-up of this budget from the General Bureau of Public Budget,
we can see the results and indicators are linked to the budgetary programs. You can have the information related to indicators of each of the results or outcomes and also the products or outputs that are being managed by the budgetary programs, not only health programs, but any budgetary programs that are being implemented to date. Some uh, reflections that I would like to share with you. The budgetary programs have uh, allowed us to organize the budget before 2007. The budget allocated to interventions was not clearly defined, but now we can see that the three levels of government use the three budgetary chains, and we can see the budget assigned in births to vaccines and the different interventions, and this is more clearly defined at the three levels of government. Because of that, we have a more clear and a standardized budget, and that is why it's possible to do a follow-up of this assigned budget. The different laws or acts have uh, establish some safeguards or protections. They cannot be they cannot be made available to other interventions that have not been previously defined. In this way, we have been able to So uh, now you can no longer use the budget for interventions. Uh, and this has also been used uh, for the following purpose. At the civil society, we can do a follow-up process, and we can raise alerts to the Ministry of Finance, to the Ministry of Health, which are very good partners and allies, because they allow us to see how the money is being spent and if the money is being adequately executed for these interventions. We have also defined, defined the follow-up and evaluation of uh, budgetary programs through performance indicators and other assessments or evaluations. We have also established incentive mechanisms such as the Municipal Incentives Plan and the Budgetary Support Agreements, which are incentives that are tangibly present in the budget. If they have attained a result in agreement signed between the different levels of government, after an evaluation, we need to see if there has been a specific or tangible result of this uh, commitments undertaken. Other reflections that I would like to share with you. We have some aspects that we need to improve. Uh, for instance, alignment of uh, the uh, better alignment of the value chain supply product result. We have to prioritize critical supplies. We need to define which are these critical supplies. The operators need to clearly execute them. The alignment of the programming by points of care through the SIGA. These are some aspects that need to be generated in a more operational manner and we have we face some challenges from the implementation of the multi multi year programming the budget is generated annually it is drafted annually it is prepared annually it is not for a period that goes beyond one year but we can do the programming for a, a year longer than the fiscal year now we want to have a multi year programming starting this year, and we have a more, we have a more prospective look. In three years, what do we want to do? And what would be the financial implications of this? The creation of a performance incentive fund, which is the Fed, and the signing of new budgetary support agreements. In the case of the health sector, they will prepare a budgetary support agreement with the Belgian cooperation, similar to what they had with the nutritional program. Finally, I would like to tell you that this information, well, from based on what I have discussed with other colleagues from Chile, from Colombia, from Central American countries, information is public. <laughs> From the side of on the side of the Minister of Finance, we want to make the information more transparent. So this is made available to the different operators of the three levels of government. So through this portal, you can have information of the budgetary programs. And this information is updated every 12 hours. So it's fresh, updated, timely information from the national, regional, local levels where you can see what is the budget allocated which are the budgetary modifications that have been made, what is the budget that has been spent, the accrued 
budget, what is the percentage of execution, and in a broken down manner, you can see the products of what we just discussed. The budget linked to births, to vaccines, etc. You can you have this information available to you, and this is a way of doing a follow up and making sure that this uh, budget allocated to these interventions uh, is being adequately executed and spent by the operators. Thank you very much.